Here we try to get in some inspiration from the level five prompt structure that we've seen in, um, in a previous video. And this level five prompt should have the following qualities. It should include a description of high level goal, a detailed list of subtasks, an explicit statement asking LLM to explain its own output, a guideline on how LLM output will be evaluated and few short examples. We will also use GPT-4 here uh, because it uh, generally is a better model, gives better answers, it follows the instructions better. Um, and now we'll try to create a prompt that follows this level five uh, directions and we'll split it again between system template, so something that we provide to the model as the, the system part, as the system message, and the user template, which is uh, something that we provide as an input from a user. So we have already prepared this. So let's run the cells and take a look at the system and the, the user part of the, the prompt. So in the system prompt, uh, we're instructing the, the model to get into, into a specific role. Uh, we're telling it you're a creative assistant with the goal to create a synthetic data set of weights and biases user questions. Uh, WMB users are asking these questions to a bot, so they don't know the answer and their questions are grounded in what they are trying to achieve, uh, not in the documentation. We're interested in questions that can be answered by WMB documentation, but the users don't have access to this documentation. So you need to imagine what they're trying to do and use according language. So hopefully this will avoid the situation where the question looks like it was uh, generated from documentation. And then the second part of the prompt, uh, it provides some examples of real user questions. Uh, so this is the, the few shot part of the prompt. And we tell the model it will be judged by how well it matches this distribution. So the questions generated by the bot should be similar to real user questions. In the next step, we provide a fragment of weights and biases documentation and which serves as an inspiration for synthetic question and the source of the answer. And, and here we provide this chunk of, of the actual document. And now we provide some further information to the model. We ask it to generate a user question. We also ask it, ask it to generate a corresponding answer. Uh, but first, we want the model to explain the user context. And hopefully by starting with the user context, with the problems the user might be trying to solve, we avoid this situation of being grounded in the, in the doc. Second, uh, we generate the user question. And third, provide the accurate and concise answer in Markdown format to the user question using the documentation. We also provide how the model will be evaluated. We want this question to be realistic, to be able to come from a real user, to be about weights and biases. It should be answerable by the weights and biases document fragment. And we also want the answer to be high quality. And then uh, we will want to parse it automatically. So we ask the model to provide it in this format, starting with the context and the question and then the answer. So let's see how the model will perform now with this uh, much, more, um, much more specific prompt. And we can see now um, we provided, um, we filled in this template with actual values with some random uh, real questions from our users. We also put this a fragment of weights and biases documentation and uh, the rest of the prompt. And now we can request the model uh, to generate uh, answers. And we will also define um, a parsing function. We want to pull out uh, the, the context and the question and the answers from the model generations and uh, hopefully the model will follow the instructions and will put it in the right format so we can parse it automatically. Uh, so let's, uh, let's run this function as well. And now let's try to generate uh, the questions based on this. Okay, 
this took a while. Uh, GPT-4 is a bit slower. We also have this back off, so potentially it, it might have waited um, it might have waited a bit to generate the answer, but now we, we generated uh, the model response, we parsed it, and we have these three items. The first one is the context. In this case, uh, the context is a user using Quaid Symbiosis integration with PyTorch Lightning. Uh, then we have the question, how do I log the gradients, parameter, histograms, and topology of my model while training it with PyTorch Lightning and WNB? I think this is much better than some of the previous examples. And then we also have the response. So as we look into the future at evaluating these models, uh, we should be able to also uh, see how, um, how our application um, is um, responding in an accurate way and using these ideal answers as our target. So now that uh, we verified that this function works, we can uh, run this um, in a loop and we can uh, generate questions for each of the documents that we have in our uh, in, in, in our uh, repo. And what we will do with this later, because we want to have like a, a, a big uh, data set of synthetic questions for our model evaluation, we'll uh, save it into a data frame and then save it as a CSV file. And uh, we'll log that as a weights and biases table so that uh, we can uh, explore this data interactively. And uh, we will also save it as a CSV file into weights and biases artifact. Artifacts in Weights and Biases is a data set uh, and model versioning tool. And we will be able to pull this uh, data set later on for evaluating our application because we have it generated in, as an artifact. We can then track the lineage of this data set and, um, and use it in our pipelines. And after doing that, we'll finish our Weights and Biases run. So let's run this now. And in the next video, we'll take a look at this synthetic data set in a weights and biases table.